Welcome to the February 19th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. I'm glad you all could make it tonight. Uh, if you could turn off your cell phones as we have a TV feed, and um, the cell phones tend to interrupt the feed. That would be great. If you would all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First order of business, uh, Secretary McFarland, could you please take the attendance? Of course. President Singer. Here. Vice President Brantsett. Here. Treasurer for, uh, sorry, Treasurer for Z. Absent. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. Member Friedel. Here. Great. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, moving into the consent ag agenda, we have six items. We have approval of the meeting minutes from January 15th. We have a few uh, persons recommended for employment. We have some staff members that have announced their resignation. And we have Yo-Yo -Yo audit renewal as well as the approval of payment of the school system's bills and legal invoice payments. I would accept a motion for the consent agenda. I move we approve consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.6. Second. Is there any uh, addition, deletion, or discussion? Okay, that being said, all in favor of approving items 2.1 to 2.6 of the consent agenda, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it's unanimous. And now moving in uh, to Shining Stars. Yes. Mr. Sherrill. Our first recognition tonight is Sean Brown. If Sean would come up. And as Sean's walking up, I'm going to read a little bit about you, Sean, if you want to stand here. <laughs> Sean has been with Midland Public Schools since 2010 and employed with the VireClean since June of 2014. Sean has worked in almost all school buildings within the district and was assigned to a temporary building manager position at Carpenter Street School in September of 14. In November of 14, Sean was promoted to the full-time building manager position at Chestnut Hill. Sean's a very clean supervisor stated, he cares a great deal about the students and staff and has been very reliable and dependable. Sean is a very valuable team member and we are very pleased to have him at Chestnut Hill. Sean was nominated for a shining star by an MPS staff member who said, Sean is incredibly hardworking and he takes great pride in this building and how it is presented to the public. He often stays hours past the scheduled time to ensure that the rooms are cleaned properly and set up and take down for events are done the right way. If a teacher needs something done in their classroom, he is right there doing what is needed and often faster than expected. He is friendly and personable and always has a smile on his face. Sean is someone who is truly a shining star for Midland Public Schools. Congratulations, Sean. <laughs> And our second shining star is Pamela Andrews. If Pam would come up. <laughs> Mrs. Andrews currently teaches third grade at Seabird Elementary School. She began her MPS career in 1992 as a sixth grade teacher at Seabird Elementary. Pam has taught many different grades at Seabird during the 26 years with MPS. <laughs> Pam earned her Bachelor's of Arts degree from Central Michigan University in 1987 and her Master's of Arts degree in Elementary ed Education, also from CMU, in 1994. Pam was nominated for a signing star by an MPS parent. Among her comments were the following. Mrs. Andrews has been so helpful with our son transitioning into third grade. Our son has ADHD and a 504 plan. The week before school started, Mrs. Andrews met with us to hear about the past struggles that we had with school, as well as listen to our recommendations. She took time to get to know us, our situation, and our son. She also sends us a daily note about his behavior, shining moments, and daily struggles. It's been so awesome to get this kind of feedback from his teacher. It allows us to be better, 
better give rewards and consequences at home for school behavior. Mrs. Andrews definitely has been going above and beyond to ensure, ensure the child's learning success. Congratulations, Pam. <coughs> All yours, and you get to sign the board next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this. Thank you, Pam. Great, thank you. Want me to keep going? Yeah. You've got, we have two presentations for you tonight, and our first one is um, called the Nepal Project, and I will turn it over to Kim McMahon and Karen Straley, who, who kind of led this up for MPS. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hi. Thank you for having us. I'm Karen Staley. Adams Elementary and Central Park Elementary. Oh yeah, I'm from Jefferson Middle School. And we're here to present our Nepal project to you. The Nepal project doesn't just belong to us. It belongs, it isn't us. It is Jefferson Middle School, Adams Elementary, and Central Park Elementary. The project couldn't have been a success without all three schools and all of us. And it's amazing what has happened. This is our logo. It started with two um, eighth grade art students and a parent, Mr. Black, that finished it off for us to start our vision. And it started all by a group of concerned citizens reaching out to the community. We reached out to David Marsha Shannon, and you'll see them in the pictures in the background. In they. The <laughs> I met them through um, Pam Hoppala, a teacher at my school. My culture club came to me very excited about the Holocaust, and they wanted to know more about what they had just learned in their English class because they were reading Anne Frank Diary. And I said, well, let me see if I can find out who this Mr. Shannon is. So I went to her, and she hooked me up with him. And he came and talked to our culture club after school about the Holocaust and their travels over in the different countries in Anne Frank's house. and so. While they were there, they're like, we've traveled to Nepal. Would you like to learn about Nepal? And we're like, that would be awesome. And so they came, and they presented to my culture club. And they, we started talking about Nepal. And then all of a sudden, they heard about our Haiti. We raised enough money to help rebuild the house in Haiti. They wanted to know, hey, what about a new project? And I said, that would be great. It started out as a medical camp and a $2,000 idea of this is what we're going to do. And so, this is what we decided to do. Um, so we did a lot of education about this. Um, Dave and Marcia Shannon came and talked to my culture club, to your culture club. Um, every class at Central Park 
um, elementary. And then I took what they shared with my culture club and shared it with all my students at Adams. And I teach two fifth grades um, at um, Spanish at Central Park. And so I worked with them a little bit too. At the beginning or end of class, we would talk about some of these things. Um, and we showed them what it was like to, for those kids to have to be in that school. And um, it was really fun at Central Park especially because those were our kids that had schools. I remember going to um, some of the you know, first meetings about rebuilding and making Central Park. And I remember one of the um, engineers saying something about feeling like he was at an episode of American Pickers when he saw like the boilers and things like that. And so those kids had come from those schools that really needed to be rebuilt. And they had this brand new amazing school. And so they really connected to the need for a new school. Um, so there it was r really powerful. And my kids at, at Adams loved it too. And we talked about what it would be like to learn in that kind of a condition, how, you know, they sit outside to learn when they can. And this was one of the fun things that we saw in one of their buildings, I think it was at the high school. Um, this, the seasons, this was their English to Nepali, uh, six seasons, um, spring, summer, monsoon, autumn, <laughs> pre-winter and winter. Um, and monsoon season is a, you know, it's a, it's a pretty long season for them. And their ceilings had caved in or were not working. Or, um, it was dangerous and wet and they couldn't even learn. So we talked to the kids about um, how they couldn't even learn in their school. And sometimes they didn't even have school because of the weather. And so at each school, um, we made sure that we had bulletin boards set up. And um, this was at Adams, I did, and uh, we kept updating it. Because the greatest thing about it was having Dave and Marcia Shannon have a connection in Nepal. Uh, his name's Narayan Shrestha. And he is a tour guide, and he used to be a trekking guide. And this is his village, and he's a good friend of theirs. And he works with a company in Ann Arbor, too. Um, and he, it was his village, and so he could update us, and he kept sending us pictures of the progress. And so our kids could see the difference right away that they were making. It wasn't just like, oh, we're donating money, but they were watching what was happening with their money. And this was Central Park. Jen Service was a great big part of our project, too, and um, she helped us out a lot um, over at Central Park. That is her bulletin board, and that is um, my class. My cl not my classroom, it's Whitney Jacobs classroom, but when I was in there, um, those were some kids uh, writing letters to the kids in, in, um, in Nepal. And of course at my school at Jefferson with my culture club, we were trying to think out of the box besides just putting money into the box. How could we get our school involved? So it was a whole school project. We had hat day and the kids paid money and the money that all the proceeds, if they paid money, they got to wear a hat and they got all the money would go towards the Nepal project. We had um, some silly hats going on. We had teachers as well as students all involved in it. It just added a fun atmosphere to, you know, making a difference. As well as we had Charger Spirit Day because it was the football game and we sold green and gold beads and the proceeds, again, all went to the Nepal Project. And we were very fortunate to have a connection with Dow High, not just for Spirit Day, but my students and some of them are there. I'm so excited about having them here. They're so proud. They should be. Um, we have um, some CAS students, IB students, working on their CAS projects that were able to come and work with the Culture Club and talk about, and, and I, I'm going to let them come up and introduce themselves and talk about what their connection at the high school coming to the middle school and working with my students. Hi, <clears throat> we're the cast students Ms. Haley was just talking about. I'm Noah Nichols, this is Duncan Donahue, and this is Will Adams. And so what CAST stands for is Creativity, Activity, and Service. And as IB Diploma candidates, we have to do this project um, to get the diploma. And through our connection with Ms. Staley, we helped the middle school students specifically working on the Nepal project connect with their community and communicate better with their community. And a way in which we did this Here's a nice picture of us all working together. Um, <laughs> so a way we did this is we made a website for Miss Staley, actually, so that you could reach out to a much larger community, get no donations, and also figure out you know, what's going on, what they're doing here, and like, why Nepal. Um, and another way we did it, which you can kind of see in this bottom picture right here, is we worked on a bulletin board at Jefferson. So we um, came on Fridays to their club meetings, and we helped them make a bulletin board. And it was a lot of fun. And I think <clears throat> Kevin and Abe also contributed. They're also IB Diploma candidates. And here they are. 
Thank you very much, Noah. Um, so what Abe and I worked on is we also had a cast project, and we thought that the Jefferson Culture Club, having worked with the Nepal project, would be a perfect starting spot for us to continue um, something that we've been working on separately, known as the International Business Internship or International Business Alliance Program, which is run through a nonprofit organization known as um, Leadership Initiatives, which is based in Washington, D.C. And the goal of this is to get students to work on creative solutions together in, in teams collaboratively on um, partner with business partners in Nigeria from struggling businesses and entrepreneur business owners to help their businesses grow and benefit and help benefit their communities. So um, the thing is, uh, Kevin and I were part of this International Business Alliance program uh, last year in high school. And we felt that um, because it's mostly largely based with high school students who are seeking to help build up these Nigerian businesses, we thought maybe we should help expand that to the middle school level. and so we thought, why not work with Mrs. Daly's Culture Club here and you know, expand, try to expand their, uh, sphere, uh, their knowledge of what's happening out in the world. So when we heard Mrs. Daly was talking about the Nepal crisis, we thought maybe, why not introduce these Jefferson Middle School students to uh, things that are happening in another country, like Nigeria, and maybe we can show these students that while through donations they can help changes in Nepal, why not have them to come, uh, come up with ideas about trying to come up with solutions that these businesses in Nigeria might be having. Yeah. Thank, I, I look forward to the business part continuing the project of, OK, we've helped the school, and now they have this new school. How do we help them become sustainable? How do they keep moving forward? And we're hoping that we can do that. And I don't know about all, about all of you, but I feel real comfortable knowing that my future is in the hands of these right. fine young men you right go. here. So <laughs> I want to thank them. They, they have been a wonderful addition to our project. And along with all of the schools and trying to reach out to our own schools, making curriculum connections, and some of the things we did is we did some friendly letter writing across the grades for the students to connect. Um, I believe that. Um, Mr. Shero witnessed Mrs. Zeitler talking about Nepali folk tales and then connecting it to folk tales and where they originate and how we use them here. And global problem and solution, world geography in sixth grade, this right here is what they teach. When you identify, if you ask any sixth grade student, how do, how, how do you move out of poverty? They'll say education. They know that. And to see it here helping these students in poverty move on has been wonderful. And as you can see, I could keep going on and on, and I'm going to really try not to, because I could talk about this forever. One really good connection for our eighth grade, they learn about the Constitution and the, the um, um, democracy. And Nepal is where we used to be. They used to be a monarchy and, and, and have fought off communism, and they're still fighting a 10-year battle to become a democracy. And we, we have all of that. And we fought for that long and hard. And they're doing the same thing. They're going through the same process we already went through. And so it's a wonderful connection for them for learning. Um, at elementary, our connections look a lot different. Um, I actually <laughs> talked with each grade level and their teachers and the um, IB coordinator. And we came up with ideas, I mean, starting in kindergarten, like five senses is one of their science units. And what do they experience with their five senses? Well, what would be different in Nepal? And so I did a lot of research and taking pictures of things that their teachers will now talk with them about that connect to their curriculum. And you can see my favorite one was for sure second grade does water conservation and pollution. Um, this school didn't have any water until we raised money. Um, and the difference that that has made in the life of that school you, it, it's priceless. So they really um, have been enjoying learning about how that works. I um, mean, even our auxiliary teachers have been connecting. Um, Mrs. Haskett is learning the Nepali nat national anthem, and actually, we're still in connection with the teachers there. So I reached out to them and asked them to send me a video of their one of their students singing it, so we could get the diction right. Um, and we, the arts, doing weaving projects. So we're just connecting with this um, across the curriculum. And the nice thing while we were there, with the help of the boys, uh, or with, of, of our high school students, the website that we had allowed us, even though we had to work through a few snafus because <laughs> their internet's not quite like ours, we were able <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Lots of differences. 
And so we were able to show almost immediately within you know a day or half of 12 hours. And I, we also, I also had an interactive Google Doc set up where the kids every day would be typing me questions. And at night before I went to bed, I'd be answering their questions back. And it, it, it was just a great experience for those students to really see the difference that they really truly made around the world. So, um, and this starts our journey of our first stop. And at the school we went to, the first day we got into Wana, we headed right for, this is a case to three school that we went to. And as you can see, their school's not in bad condition, but they had no, they didn't have furniture to learn on, right, from. So part of the money that, by the way, my students wanted you to know, we set a $5,000 goal and we reached 14,000 oh, plus. Wow made a huge difference in a lot of lives over there. And this is some furniture and some cupboards and supplies that were built for the students so that they would have a place to sit not the floor to learn and some supplies to go with that. And it was kind of an amazing journey that even though we were leaving and you can see us walking up the hill, they were following us arm in arm, hugging their children mm -hmm. as they followed us up the hill. And they don't have much to give, but there was one family that insisted that we come and they had a little spot cleared for us. And the only thing they had were the oranges on their trees. And by the way, they were delicious. I don't know <laughs> if it was just because. And that's what they gave us. And they stuffed them in our pockets. They were stuffing them in our bags and purses. They were so thankful for what we had done which leads us to why we were there. Hmm. Um, this had to be the most, of course, the most powerful day. Uh, w w the greatest thing was we woke up in the morning. In fact, I think they knocked on our door at the hotel um, and uh, said, Have you, are you up, are you up? And we went out and um, they had told us that you could see the mountains. We, I thought it was all mountain. They said it was hill. Um, to me, it was very mountainous. It was interesting climbing the mountains to get where we got. But um, the mountains were showing the morning we went to the school, and it was the only day that we saw the mountains. And they said, they, they're here to greet you. There's, they, they believed that the mountains came out for us. So that was kind of cool. And we had to walk <laughs> about an hour to get to the school. Um, and so we did that. And then probably, as we came around the corner, this is what we saw. Oh, wow. Um, I remember asking Narayan, do people get emotional here, like for joy or pride? Because I'm kind of a sap, and I was really nervous about how I might react. And he said that they certainly do, which is good because I cried the whole way up the hill. Um, this is what we saw. The top at the top, you can see there's a red banner that they had made for us, welcoming us. And the teachers were at the bottom. Some of the administrators, project managers, maybe I can't really see. And then the students were lined up all all up, and then the parents at the top. And as we came up, they put. Oh, scarves and redruxia necklaces and flowers that they handmade that day like um, and the children were putting so many flowers Karen was giggling she couldn't even hold them anymore um, all the way up yeah and they were middle school boys so I know how they operate and they were laughing <laughs> not because <laughs> but up at the top they have um, they use bamboo as the stick and they have all those flags hanging as you know they, they use what they have to greet us and here's the sign welcome um, and our guests wow. and as we walk in and this is true like seriously at one point we couldn't we could barely see and we even took some off before we did it we took them off and then more and more and we had our um, we designed this banner but they wanted a banner to hang that shows all of our schools this is this is their school with um, thank yous and our schools that um, signify our partnership and it was amazing how many people were there. They, they just, they lined in a huge circle around us. They were up on the hill. Uh -huh. People from all around came to see, you know, the Americans representing the schools that really changed their lives. And <clears throat> here we are giving, um, this is the plaque that um, Gen Service had made that we delivered and gave to them. I'll talk while this is going. Um, this was my favorite part of the day. They wrote a song for us. They performed the song, they sang it, and they danced to it. And um, we couldn't understand it because it was in Nepali. But while you're watching it, I asked for the translation and she gave it to me. So it says things like, welcome everyone present. You were a light of education, giving knowledge to everyone. Welcome the donors to our economy. Our school was poor in education, but you helped us to be prosperous. 
um, welcome kind donors of Jefferson, Adams, and Central Park. The relationship between our schools is never expected to end. Welcome money donors and intellectuals, and I think that was awesome. <laughs> With flowers and red colors, welcome and thank you. And it was really long and we just pulled out that part of it, but um, they, there were several different dances that they performed, but they wrote that specifically for us. Um, and that was really kind of magical, I thought. Before they even started, it was all about honoring Midland Public Schools and our schools and what we had done. And then finally, finally, we were given a chance to give back. And we brought toothbrushes. Uh, we had Nepal buttons for them, pencils, and um, some rings. And the kids were just thrilled to get these. And after we went through all of the ceremony, then we were pulled into one of the classrooms. And these are all of the project managers that Narayan worked with to make sure that everything was being done that needed to be done in the schools. And as you can see, even if you look at the schools in the, in the room that we're in now, there are not holes, the floors, it's, it's a much better learning environment for the kids. And we um, gave the letter that our um, MPS wrote to them, and they were very honored to have that. And these are all of the pictures with the project managers. Um, um, this is the water. Um, it still amazes me that it works, uh, because it's just nothing like what we see here. And this was really fun for my students to see. But this is their spring water in Wana. This is the only water source there is. There's no running water in the buildings, in the homes, anywhere. We didn't have running water where we were. Um, we chose not to, sh to, you know, to go bathe there. Uh, but that's where they bathe, that's where they do their laundry, that's where they get all their water. But that's where they hooked the, um, the water line. And it's just a little... And they trenched it all the way to the school. The and they didn't have enough money to pay for contractors, so the parents of the students volunteered their time to dig those trenches and put that water line in. They were, and then um, this is their bathroom. That's the kind of bathrooms they have. They're squatty potties, and they just have a bucket of water. Um, and that is... Um, where they have their water tank now and the students can drink water and uh, they were spending the entire day without any source of water to clean with, to drink, and some of them walk an hour to get to school. And it's pretty warm there, so it just made a big difference. This is the media center that they're really proud of. Um, we donated one big thing that we could donate with $14,000, and that was with the help of all three schools, um, Dave and Marcia Shannon, uh, Journeys International, which funneled our money in the Earth Preservation Fund, matched 4000 So it just came from a lot of places. But we also provided them with Wi-Fi and um, a computer, and then a local doctor from Kathmandu that was from WANA donated that television so that they could actually project lessons to their students and be connected online. And they got whiteboards. And part of the money also went to, they bought an e-curriculum that allowed them to be able to use the computer to teach on. And a couple of the teachers were going to get training on that with the money as well. They're very curious to know, how do you teach or how do you do this? Because they don't have the resources or the classes and that we all are very fortunate to be able to have to, before we go into teaching. And this is a letter that one of the students wrote, and I'm going to read it for you. This was, uh, I believe it's an eighth grader, and it says, Dear friend, thank you very much for your kindly help. This is no doubt that you like us in our school. You and your school helps us. I am glad for you and your school family. Your financial support is most important for us. We used the money in many different Topics, we, I'm sorry, it's hard to read when it's not. We were repaired school buildings, brought water in school, bought laptop, whiteboard, different kinds, book, furniture, and other educational instruments. We are so happy because you help us. It gives us great pleasure to study in our school. Nowadays, we can drink water, stay in a clean classroom. So we are glad for your kindly help. At last, I want to say Happy New Year 2018. Please don't forget us. We will. We also never forget you. Love you very much. Um, and 
so you know, we met with the teachers and I think I, I think we're probably about out of time but the most important thing that I think happened there was when we met with the teachers we could ask questions and I, um, I asked them what was the biggest change like we wanted to help you but how does it make you feel like what is the difference now that you have this school because for us really it's not their school is still nothing like what we're used to but they said um, you know beforehand when you didn't help us our school was considered the poorest school in the whole district and when people would ask our students or us where do you teach or where do you go to school we were embarrassed to tell them we didn't want them to know that we taught at Saraswati school because we didn't have anything and our building was falling down and we knew we weren't getting a good education but since you helped us now we're so proud we have the best school in the district hmm. everyone wants to come here and everyone wants to teach here and our students are healthy now with out the dust and with the water and we are able to do so much more and they told us that we didn't everybody there we don't know anyone so what we found out was there were teachers and administrators from all over the mountain at there at that mm -hmm. ceremony wow. asking Narayan if we would help them next oh, wow. <laughs> um, it made it changed their lives it changed their lives they're so proud and their self-esteem is so different and I was telling that story to Central Park and I thought it was so cute there was a little boy in fifth grade over there that said that is awesome they're like the best school on their mountain they're like the Central Park of Midland <laughs> <laughs> and I was like they are like the Central Park of Midland um, so you did get buttons um, that was one of the things my culture club did I have a couple of students out there that are here but they designed the buttons and decided that we could sell them and so with my culture club budget that I have from our PTO we bought those and um, pass them out and I thought it was cool to see them on our students and their students and we we're staying in touch I'll let you talk about how we're gonna keep um, we're just we want to stay in touch we are continuing to stay in touch with this they've been sent this was their 54th anniversary last week and they sent us lots of pictures and videos so that we could see what they're still doing and it's really fun to watch the kids still wearing their Nepal project buttons you know still like a month out and we were in the newspaper and the best part about it was that we sent it to Narayan who is in international tour guide therefore he knows a lot of people so Midland Public Schools is really getting their name out everywhere. <laughs> yes. Thank you. it's amazing because Facebook worked faster than Google it took me two and a half hours to download 14 pictures in on Facebook you could it was just amazing so we did visit a high school and I just want to take a minute to this actually is a lucky high school but as you can see here this is a math class 73 students in it and it was interesting because they wanted me to go up and teach one of the math problems luckily <clears throat> it was percents and I know how to do those because that's part of sixth grade curriculum <laughs> but it was interesting because I knew they were doing percents and it, math is the universal language I'm just gonna make that plug as a math teacher I could go up and they knew and they like yay she's right but my <laughs> I'm nervous whoa um, but this is their library but their library is old donated books so even though that looks really awesome it, it, I, it doesn't have a lot of use I mean like real use for educational purposes for the students and over here in the bottom it's a little dark but uh, they don't have lights in the l science lab and it was like Kim said what did you say it was it looked like Greenfield Village Museum and so it was very dated but at least they had something and that was one of the questions that a lot of the teachers how do you teach science how do you teach math what do you do um, and so they have dreams here's a spot that they actually cleared in Wana they want to build a soccer stadium someday so they they can bring people into their village so they do have dreams and hopes just like us and they have a long ways to go with their education but at least we have given them a start and we all know this young man and um, it we have one last video that you have to see because this picture I think has um, touched a lot of hearts and a lot of lives and when they're saying thank you and this is holding the sign <laughs> oh, we love his. Can you tell me about his picture? Oh, you can Can you tell me about his picture? Can you tell me about his picture? Um, so many people to thank and you know Dave and Marsha Shannon who we wouldn't have been able to do this project without them 
Narayan and Earth Preservation Fund and Journeys, the Midland Community Foundation. Dr. Carter is the one who donated the toothbrushes for us to take. Abby Young, I would have never been able to, and my CAS students, be able to get this website up and running. MPS administration, we can't thank you enough for supporting our project with the three schools and then allowing us to be ambassadors to travel. It was it really brought home to the students what impact they had on those lives. And our administrators, Ted and Tila and Dr. Lipset, Bridget Hockemeyer and Shannon Blazy, again, all of those administrators so helpful and instrumental in helping us with this um, making this project come to life. And of course, a special thanks to the staff, students, families of Jefferson Middle School, Adams Elementary, and Central Park, our culture clubs, our CAS students that came and helped, our IB students that came to help us. Um, because never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, that's the only thing that ever has, and indeed, that's what they did. So, thank you. We heard you may have some really hard questions that we might not be able to answer, so we're ready. We even brought reinforcements in case you would like to. Excellent. Um, do we have some questions? Uh, I'll go first. All right. So th this presentation was very eye-opening, um, fascinating, and, and I think humbling to see. Um, seeing that the, the effect, uh, the, the change that's been affected by this project is, in my mind, incredible. Um, literally night and day differences. It begs the question to me, what could $50,000 do? Or what could $100,000 do? Um, with that being said, are you guys still actively raising money uh, for this project? Um, actually, yes. One of my culture club students has sh um, some connections with her family and, um, and dad with one of the parochial schools. And they want to continue to raise money. And so actually, what we were going to work on Friday, but we had some health issues with all of us, is um, how can we communicate and reach out to those other schools besides just our schools around the community? So that is, you know, one thing that we're doing. And um, I've, yes, I in my heart, I know there will be a next time. I just don't know what that will look like. Um, but, I, and I think that we're hopeful to go, you know, go back in the summer and, and help them. They sure had a lot of things that they, STEM was a big buzzword in their high school and they're, well, they didn't know what STEM was, but that's what they were talking about. They needed right. science stuff. They needed, we taught them what STEM was, but they wanted help how to teach it. They wanted help with materials. They they definitely wanted a lot more help with a playground and a, everybody wanted help. But um, our hope is to, and if, if not there, I don't, I don't think this, I don't think our interest and our students' interest in this stuff is going to go away. So not only the schools, I think that we can affect maybe some foundations and some other places. So we're hopeful it'll just get bigger. Mm -hmm. This was That's a beginning. Mm -hmm. my, my last question is, maybe I missed it in the presentation. Um, what was the name of the website or was there a link that would, and then embedded within that, is there some way to donate um, money online? Mm -hmm. Um, uh -oh. We start well. The, the problem is, is we're at that stage of how the legality of how and how do you set up fundraising? How it, through you know the Earth Preservation Fund is the nonprofit that we worked with, and so it, we were at an initial stage that we didn't have enough time to research all of that. And I think it would be a wonderful idea, and I do believe that is one of our next steps. How do we continue this? And we have talked about that. And it's the perfect platform to put something like that. However, you know, with going and raising money and just getting back, but yes, that is, and one of my students actually researched it. One, you know, he's like, hey, I think we could put like a raise money on the website, one of my eighth graders. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. With, you know what I mean? With being, you know, nonprofit and raising money and, and, and getting that money. So that is homework on our part of how we have to, Continue and what we what we need to do to make those things happen. We'll but let yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's up in front of you. Because <laughs> we will. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say that you had a lot of thank yous out there, but it wouldn't have been possible without you two and your enthusiasm and and your go to it attitude and and wanting to keep fighting for for that project to continue. And these young men that got up and spoke, you're right there too in saying that 
um, you guys are going to do great things. Um, you, you can tell you're speaking with your heart when you get up here, and you're very um, good orators, and um, your conviction shows. So that's what we need in this world is more people who are going to continue to care and, and, and you know, get that across to other people that we have and we have a lot of excess that we can share with others. So, yeah, well, I just want to, that's why it was funny because one of the things that I, I read a quote that said, don't make it a dream, make it a plan. And so, in my plan, and I don't know how long this plan will take, I think it would be amazing to take these IB students now that as a culminating activity to take them to Nepal. And okay, now our next project is, is we're going to do this. And we, in IB, we, think globally and act locally. But we really need to make, how do we understand globally experiencing that? And I just think it would be so amazing if these students could really, and teachers, you know, teaching global citizenship to actually be involved, it would be powerful beyond belief. Yeah, she took what I was gonna say. Oh. Really, no, it's perfect. Uh, I just, you know, all of our elementaries are I, international baccalaureate now, and this was the greatest tie-in. Um, you know, that now they're seeing something global. They're they're not just donating money somewhere. They're seeing how it's making a difference. That was our big pull for why we wanted to go there and make the relationship and be ambassadors for our students so they could see that. And um, hoping that they'll take what they learned and act locally. And I hope that a whole bunch more of them will end up right like that. Those guys. That's my it's my dream. I I was just blown away. I think the big thing is how such a small amount of money can make such a big impact. Because we sit up here talking about millions of dollars in our budget and everything and you know, $121 million we have right now that we're investing in our schools and you're talking about what $14,000 could do. And, and it is incredible. And then the think globally is so important. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Poland, and I was amazed. I was running a workshop, and I had people from four continents participating. And I thought, you know, really, that, that is everybody's world right now. And so to gain that understanding is just phenomenal. I would just say thank you and congratulate all of you, because as you've said, kind of like this quote, you're a small group here in Midland, Michigan. Most people don't have a clue who we are. And, the, and really, the thousands, <laughs> now they do, the thousands and thousands, probably millions of people whose lives will eventually be changed because of this. And your comment, that one of, didn't one of the students say something about education is what will change the world? And we hear that all the time. And just looking at that school and how simple it is, but if they value education so greatly, because they're in a very simple little building, and. If they believe it, they'll achieve. And we'll see great things from some of those students someday. Some One of the best messages, and I, I want to make sure that we mention Jen Service is not able to be here tonight, but she was also at Central Park. Um, she has a lot going on. I, I believe that she's the Gerstacker Fellowship, and she's traveling with that. So this was not she decided that this wouldn't be a venture that she could take as well and we appreciate her help over there at Central Park so and again she was very pivotal in helping us pull that off and the important message to my students is that if I could figure out how to bottle it they we have so many um, opportunities no matter where you're from here in the United States and if we could have that mindset that they have that they know how important education is. Wow, we could, it, it would be amazing what we could do with that. Do you have anything, Brad? Just unbelievable. It was awesome. Yep. The only thing that came to my mind is the internet speed. What, what can you do with what you're able to set up for them and what you achieved? What can they do with that at this point? Well, the internet that they have is they do have an email, so if we wanted to communicate, but we've learned through Facebook, we can get pictures and videos faster. But through their internet, they're able to connect to the e-curriculum that, that they purchased and be able to use that as a teaching tool. Or if they want to show something from the computer, like a picture of something, or you know, it would allow them to be able to use it as a tool at this stage. And I'm sure that they have better ways um, of of doing all of that, then, but they've resorted to Facebook as well. Yeah, 
It, it was interesting. No running water, no indoor bathrooms, or no window panes or anything. But they, most of them had cell phones, and they had Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not always great, but even though I just feel like it just connected to them to the world because their internet is slow, but it works for them. It, it works a little hard internationally sending things that are big, but they are able to show these kids the world. And I don't. I mean, I I can't even tell you how much we were stared at. They have never seen someone from the United States in this area. It is so remote, and getting there was a trip. And and it, and it, they've never seen people that look like us. And so there's so much they don't know, and that's that connection to the web. I mean, people have phones, but probably not a lot of these kids' parents. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for your efforts. And the thing I keep thinking about is the number of students that you impacted through this project. And when I first heard about it, I was thinking Adams. And I was thinking, oh, 400 kids will, will get this great opportunity. And then I heard it was Jefferson. And then I hear Dow High is involved. And I just wonder how many students we're actually talking about. I'm sure it's well over 600. Oh, and, yeah. and for the impact for two teachers and two community members that reached out and gave um, you know a, a little nudge, and two teachers that really took advantage of that, not only wanted to teach your students, but looked out for the welfare of the district. And I'm very, very proud of that. And um, I'm, I'm glad you had such initiative. And we're very fortunate. So thank we you. We are thank too. You. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. So when we met with Daryl earlier in the day, we told him he had a hard act to follow up. But we always like talking about money and um, doing good things with money. So Daryl is here to report on, um, as we're nearing the end of series one bond completion work, if you recall, we have, uh, uh, we'll be selling three series total in the bond. In series one, um, you're going to have to tell me 50. Yeah, we're going to get all the numbers. You got it. We won't get the numbers. Gerald's going to give you the numbers, and we have, I think we have some good news for you here. So, I think um, uh, Secretary McFarland said it well and humbling after seeing some of those images and then some of the images I'm about to show. It's, uh, it, is, it is a pretty humbling experience. So um, thanks to the board for having me tonight. Um, I look forward to sharing with you some of the, the progress we've made with the bond program. Um, and then before I get started, just one more thank you. I just wanted to you know, send a thank you out to all the buildings. Um, you know, we recognize that the buildings are there for to educate students and you know we come with some inconvenience even though we're bringing a lot of things so the understanding and patience that the buildings have had with us through all these projects has been uh, remarkable and we're thankful for that um, so I want to get into a couple topics tonight the first is what's been completed so I want to run through some projects and show you you know all the exciting stuff that's been done uh, and then I want to get into the budget I want to talk about what's been spent and and uh, update the board um, on that and then Lastly, what's next? So what's coming in Series 2? So Mr. Sherrill talked about Series 1. So we'll talk a little bit about what's coming in Series 2 as well. So starting with what's been completed, the middle school boiler replacement project was the first project that we, um, that we completed. Uh, we went into both middle schools with the oldest boilers, uh, replaced them with high efficiency condensing boilers, VFDs. So increasing the efficiency, lowering the district's operational costs, and then obviously with new equipment, improving reliability. So these boilers will serve the district for the next 30 years. Uh, building demolition, so Parkdale, Mills, and Cook uh, were demoed in 2016. Um, those buildings were removed down to the foundations, backfill, graded, restored. Um, you know, one thing that was kind of unique about those building demos is that we were able to uh, salvage some equipment. So the boilers in Parkdale, uh, will be installed in Carpenter this summer, and the boilers that were in Mills are now operating uh, next door at the transportation building. Uh, synthetic track surface. So we installed a new synthetic track surface at the um, stadium complex. This is a, a sealed mat with a structural spray, and that's probably the, um, you know, that surface is, is probably what you see the most in high school settings and collegiate settings. Uh, District-wide security improvements. So security was a big part of the bond campaign, and so we've completed some of those projects uh, already this summer. The first is the Sallyport style entries. Uh, so all facilities now have the Sallyport style en um, um, entries, forcing um, occupants, you know, through the office before they access the building. 
Uh, we installed a video surveillance and access control system this summer, so over 200 cameras were installed, and um, badges or card, excuse me, card readers were installed on over 100 doors, and the district rolled out over 4,000 badges uh, prior to the start of school this year. No small feat with you know, all the names, pictures, and, and, and access requirements. Uh, improved traffic flow. So this was looked at as a security project. So by the time we're done with Series One, all elementary schools will have had the bus drop off and the parent drop off separated. So really improving those you know hectic minutes in the beginning of it and end of a day at an elementary school. Um, Central Middle School demo. This was the first project that we um, we completed on the on the new Central Park site. Uh, so this was critical, obviously, for the for the new auditorium as well as the um, um, as well as the Central Park Elementary School. Um, on the exterior of that building, um, you can see we constructed new walls to make it a standalone facility. Um, uh, a picture, if you're out there now, you'd see the new siding, the stain, uh, the building envelopes really been improved, new windows, doors um, on the outside. Um, on the interior, a significant portion of the project went into that house. So the seats were replaced, new flooring, uh, new stage floor, acoustical treatments to improve the sound, and then you know state-of-the-art technology on the stage, so all the sounding, lighting requirements that you would expect out of a, out of a um, you know first-rate facility. Um, Central Park Elementary School. So as I was, you know, preparing for this, I thought, what can I say about this school that has aren't, hasn't already been said? And then I don't think there is much I can say other than I'm you know thankful for our, you know our role in bringing this really from an idea to what you see out there now. So this facility is going to serve the district for. You know, many many years, and we're uh, you know our team is very proud of our role in that uh, really unique facility, and we've seen this as somewhat of a beacon for other districts. So, you know, we've shared these videos and these images out to other districts, and a lot of other districts are going to be doing what you what you guys have already done. Uh, Plymouth and Woodcrest. So Plymouth and Woodcrest, we turned over uh, two 10,000 square foot additions over the holiday break. So. The multi-purpose room addition, so gym, cafeteria, um, new um, new kitchens were turned over, and then over the summer we completed renovations at, at both buildings on the interior. You know, a lot of focus on the classroom, new HVAC systems, flooring, paint, casework, uh, marker boards, tack boards, and then technology. We'll talk about in a second. Uh, some things significant about Woodcrest is that white area you see there is all uh, new roofing, so that had a complete roof replacement. Woodcrest also got a new boiler system. Uh, Plymouth, unique about Plymouth, we did move the, the office from the center of the building out to the front for the Sally Port style entry, so that was, you know, a significant piece of the project. And you can see some of the videos, you know, at the time this summer, you know, some of the improvements that were happening to that pick up and drop off. So on the technology side of things, so the classroom technology, so by the time we're done with series one, uh, we'll have installed new projectors and new sound field systems in all classrooms. So that sound field system elevates the teacher's voice uh, and the classroom projectors will have all been replaced. The district rolled out, uh, deployed 8,500 um, devices to staff and students since the start of the bond program. Um, audio visual upgrades. We'll talk, I'll talk a little more about kind of the idea of stemification and, and how that's impacted the budget and the projects, but the audio visual upgrades and the maker spaces and the media centers have been significant. And then this summer we'll complete the district-wide district -wide PA upgrade. So all the facilities will have a new PA council. Uh, the server will reside here and it'll be accessible uh, by the administrative staff or like an all call uh, to the district. Uh, fixtures, furniture, and equipment. Uh, furniture purchases, uh, obviously STEM Elementary had a significant furniture purchase, all of the media centers and uh, new STEM maker spaces. And then some of the offices that were relocated also had furniture purchases. Copiers and printers, um, the, the district will be bringing uh, war recommendation in March for the copiers and printers. And then bus replacement, uh, the district purchased four buses, 277 passenger buses, 238 passenger lift buses were purchased in series one. A couple other small projects, so the, the northeast locker replacement was probably small, but it was impactful in the building. The first thing I heard about when I walked into Midland Public Schools were the Northeast lockers and how terrible they were. So those were original lockers, so I know that had a big, small project, but had a big impact. And then the building management system. So every building that we've been into and renovated, we've upgraded the building management system so that the facility department can access schedules, um, you know, help with maintenance. We're also 
those systems are also connected to your um, electric meters, gas meters, so you can really track usage, and it's a good tool, um, not only for maintenance, but also tracking energy usage and saving dollars. Uh, we started, we started, we broke ground last week on Seaburn Chestnut Hill. Uh, this picture you can see here, we've put up the um, construction fence and foundations have started today. So those projects are underway. The interior renovations will be ready for the start of school in 2000, uh, this year in 18. And then we'll turn over the, um, the additions, uh, kind of same schedule in the winter of, of um, 18, 19. Just a little rendering. This is something we shared with the, with the staff today, just showing you know, what a classroom is going to look like. So new casework, new flooring, uh, that type of thing. So real similar, similar scope that we've already done at the other buildings. Um, so I put a, a video presentation together so that I mean, it's hard to capture the $50 million, which we'll talk about some numbers here in a second, into a few slides. We put together a little video presentation to kind of highlight some of these numbers. So the board's awarded 80 plus contracts since the start of series one. Um, we've done, we'll, we will have done 50 million in construction, which is about 1.5 million in construction per month or $75,000 per day, um, which is a significant amount of money. Um, but it doesn't always tell the whole story because in like June of 2017, we did 3.5 million. So we've had some big months and some small months, but um, you know, quite, quite the feat. So here's that video I mentioned to highlight some of the uh, some of the projects. saying that because you got to crack a few eggs to make some make an omelet so mm -hmm. you know some of those first images I mean just a lot of the demolition and a lot of the, the behind the scenes stuff that happened uh, while we were renovating those buildings so um, I hope that was um, you know, able to illuminate some of that stuff that maybe maybe not everyone has seen so what have we spent um, so let's talk a little bit about the budget and and what those projects have equated to uh, so this chart here is the a series one forecast and it's in uh, in millions and so I'm going to go through and I'm going to define some of these terms, and then we'll highlight a few numbers and, um, and discuss the significance of some of those. So the first one is construction. The construction line item consists of construction as well as the contingency for those projects. 
Uh, technology, technology is the infrastructure and uh, technology devices. So the infrastructure might be the video surveillance and access control system, or the cabling in the classroom or in the in the buildings. And then the the devices that I talked about, the 8,500 deployed devices, would also be included in that number. FF&E, that's furniture fixtures, furniture, and equipment. So the furniture is in that line item. Bus purchases are in that line item. The owner line item, this is fees, uh, general conditions. So things like dumpsters, porta johns, those types of things are in there. Um, the owner line item also consists of environmental costs. So the budget, the budget is, um, is the original bond application budget plus or minus any budget transfers. So as we bid out projects and um, you know, some were over, some were under. So money has been transferred between all of these line items um, as we've bid out these projects. The awarded, this is all the awarded, all the award recommendations that have, and have been awarded by the board. The unawarded are any projects that are in the bond application but have not yet been bid out. Um, so we'll run through each one of those and what's left to be bid out. And then our savings is our budget minus our awarded and unawarded um, columns. So the unawarded uh, in the construction line item, this is the contingency for Siebert and Chestnut Hill, um, as well as some of the costs for Adams construction. So Adams is unique in that it's some of the dollars are in series one and some of the dollars are in series two. Technology, this is the um, technology contingency for the technology, technology projects, as well as a portion of money set aside for the server replacement project that the district um, will replace in 18 and 19. FF&E, this is any furniture left to be purchased for the Seaver and Chestnut Hill projects. Any buses um, are included in that line item as well. Uh, copiers and printers are also included in that line item. Uh, the owner line item, the owner line item, this is general conditions. Any of the general conditions left, we forecasted how much general conditions dollars we think we need in order to complete the Seaver and Chestnut Hill and the rest of the Series 1 projects. Um, as well as any environmental cost are in there. So asbestos abatement costs would be included in that as well. So in the savings item, there's this zero here that kind of stands out in construction, but I'm gonna show you on the next slide that there were savings in this, in this line item, but the district chose to reinvest those into other projects. But I'll run through what some of those projects are. Uh, similarly with FF&E, but also FF&E, we've decided to put most of that in the unawarded because we'll talk a little bit about this idea of the STEM too that I talked about earlier and how we're protecting dollars for the furniture for those spaces. So overall, um, after we've bid out and awarded the majority of Series 1, we have about $5.2 million in savings. So additional projects, I mentioned those additional projects that were funded by savings and construction. Um, and it's this idea of stemification. So the district chose to, um, as in Central Park, to design and build their facilities around the curriculum. So this, the STEM curriculum comes with some costs. So additional technology, the technology is more robust. If you go into the media center at Central Park or the media centers when we're finished at Seabird Chestnut Hill, you know, you'll see a more robust displays to interact with the student devices, as well as just raw square footage. So a lot of these spaces, for example, the maker spaces, just require more area than they would if, if you didn't have those types of spaces. Central Auditorium, the district invested an additional million dollars in, in the Central Auditorium. Um, that went into improving the technology, everything from additional microphones in the house to carpet in the surrounding spaces. So just really you know, bringing that facility up to a, to a higher standard. Roof replacements, we did replace some additional roofs. An example would be Plymouth. We did an additional 5,000 square feet of uh, roofing at Plymouth that wouldn't have been in the original bond application. Uh, the Woodcrest and Makerspace edition, that's about a half million dollar project that we're going to start in the spring, uh, which again wouldn't have been in the original bond application. And these have all been funded through, through, those, pro through those savings. Northeast Controls upgrade. Northeast, one of the older facilities, has had some issues with the existing equipment. We've gone in and added new controls onto the old equipment. Uh, kind of moved that ahead, but used the savings to, to do that, to improve the comfort of the occupants in those spaces. Kitchen equipment, we didn't have a line for kitchen equipment in the original bond application, but through savings we've been able to identify to spend in a budget about $250,000 to um, outfit additional equipment within the new additions at the elementaries. So in some cases, 
the district would bring existing equipment in. In other cases, it would be a combination of existing and new. So there's kind of a shuffle that happened, um, moving equipment to different buildings to identify what was, what was actually needed. And then small projects. So every project we've done has had some small project you know, to improve it. So an example would be Plymouth painting the corridors uh, to really kind of give life to that building, to things as small as tax strips at Woodcrest um, that were requested by the building. So everything we've done is, we, you know, we've added small things that may not have originally been planned for, but once you got into decided were necessary. So what's next, uh, series two? Uh, so a, a brief uh, rundown of projects to come in series two. This is the 2019 complete through 22 uh, portion of the, of the bond. Uh, Adams Elementary renovations and additions, same scope as uh, Plymouth, Woodcrest, Seabert, Chestnut Hill. Uh, that project will start in the spring of 19, ready for the start of school in 19, turn over the um, addition uh, that following winter. Stadium renovations, we've budgeted for turf replacement as well as upgrades to the existing facilities. Middle school and high, high school re renovations, significant budgets and at all of those buildings, you know, consist of infrastructure projects like we've done in all the other buildings, mechanical, uh, paving, those types of things, but also things that hit the classroom like um, renovations to the um, science labs, those types of projects. Technology in series two, uh, all the wireless infrastructure is, um, has none of that has been replaced, even Central Park, you know, devices were brought from other buildings. Uh, to feed that building and so in series two we've got money to replace all of the wireless infrastructure the wireless access points and then the backside um, <coughs> server portions uh, that will be in this building phone system budget for replacing the phone system any d device refreshes and then additional buses there's about 15 uh, buses uh, budgeted for in series two so with that if I have any, if there's any questions I'd be Happy to answer. <coughs> Certainly a stark contrast to the Nepal presentation, but yeah. very exciting nonetheless. No, I feel like I'm bringing good news, but it felt like bad news at the no. same time. There's <laughs> much humility in this one as well when we realize what we actually have here. Um, you, we as board members are peppered constantly with questions about what's going on with the bond, where are we at with different projects, what's been spent. So this has been in my mind, a, a wonderful presentation that I'm going to be able to direct people to, and hopefully we have a link uh, to this presentation on the, on the website. Um, I think it's going to be tremendously helpful for, for people to see this and understand where we are in the, the grand scheme of this entire project. So thank you for, for doing a great job and identifying everything, for at least for me. You're welcome. That was going to be my question. Will this be available to the well, your web? Your board meeting is live right now. Well, I know now, the board meeting. As well as it's at the YouTube on it. We can clip this out if we okay. want, yeah. but yeah. it certainly is there. So. That'd be great. Well, it's good that our expenses are all on track, and it seems like it's been a, a long time that we've been talking about um, this Series 1 getting kicked off. I think it was five years ago when I was sitting in an auditorium uh, hearing ideas from our community and our superintendent. And, um, and so it feels great to be where we are now. Uh, I feel fortunate that we've been able to, to walk right alongside. And you've, you've been right here in Midland. So um, we're very up to date and, and um, on top of uh, what activities are going on. And I know the administration team uh, has made some uh, great choices when it comes to, uh, I guess, hard choices that, that come up during the building. You never know what you're going to get into. And uh, we've been able to uh, make the most of those decisions and come out um, really looking good on the expense side of things and still being able to get, every, get the things that we want for our community and for our schools. So thank you for that. Uh, I know it was a challenge with the, the um, buildings and, and the teachers and staff in trying to move so quickly. And I appreciate the work and how um, it was as little of a disruption to our students as possible. Um, and a big thank you to our staff, too, for helping make that happen. And I know we, we um, I just want to make sure the timeline's right. We sold the bonds in the spring of 15 and work started in the summer of 15. And so, you know, sometimes it's a long time waiting. It does feel that way, but it's really been about two, two and a half years we've accomplished all that work up there on that. 
and then you look forward, um, you're, you've got another four years of, well, three probably years of work with that last series being predominantly um, to uh, keep the infrastructure of the buses and the technology going forward. Although, if we keep trending this way and we get to the end and there's that money, you would probably go out and redo some of the work that um, was in the original bond application of some style, and you'll visit that. And so I wouldn't get too excited if there's five million sitting there because you always can run into the problems. You wait to the end, and then you determine, you know, the projects that still fit in that bond that we need to do. And we know there's tons of work. This bond is not going to solve all our building issues. We still got more work to do. Absolutely, Daryl. Can you describe the the transfer of funds? How that? Because I know we move things around. You mentioned it, but I. It kind of went fast, so I just wonder if you could add a clarification to that. Yeah, so uh, I'm trying to think of an example of a project. I mentioned the Central Auditorium. So when we did Central Park Elementary, uh, we spent a lot less contingency than we had anticipated. We had budgeted for 10%. Uh, don't know the exact number, but somewhere around 5% was spent. So we transferred about a million dollars out of the STEM contingency and put that into other projects, most of which went to Central Auditorium. So you'll get projects within construction like that. Sometimes similarly with technology, uh, you'll do something similar. Fun projects like, um, we, you know, staining. We stained the entire exterior of that building. That's that wasn't what I was part thinking of it. when it came up. Um, the there was some technology in the house that our user group really wanted. And once we saw that we could, um, we were saving somewhere that we could afford to do that, we did that. Um, STEM Elementary, Central Park Elementary, was originally in the bond app on elementary school. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, like 18 million, but then we stemified it, he used that word, and then took it to 2021 20, million, if you recall. Mm -hmm. And so as you had savings, which we, at that time, took a little bit of risk, if you were, some of you guys were around then, yeah, yeah. where we went and said, let's go forward. We scaled as far back as we could. Let's go forward. We think we'll get the savings to pay for it, which we did. Um, and so, uh, it, but it's that kind of stuff that you move, you know, if you're under on flooring somewhere and you're under on that piece of it, then you transfer it over into another area to be used. Well, I think the bond is structured such that that's the nature of the bond, too. Correct. We're not locked into the specific amounts and all the specific things when we start a project. Because like anything we do, we know that there's always going to be ebb and flow between projects. Mm -hmm. Well, and lots of little hidden different things. That right, exactly, that you, we don't. And then, when we, and then when we often there. get there, we look at it and say, you know, our original early look at mm -hmm. how much flooring wasn't very good. We maybe we should do more flooring and less right. windows or something along that line. But remember, we're trying to pick up some uh, anywhere where we feel short as well with a little bit of a sinking fund. And if our general fund stays healthy, capital improvements. And so um, we're bringing you tonight a couple of those issues. Mm -hmm. right. So. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me when I see this and knowing where we started, you know, when I was on the board and we had a failed technology and um, sinking fund that we were going after and then where we've gotten here, I think I just need to say I feel really proud of all the hard work that everyone's put into this and to see what it is. Very, very proud to live in this community and serve on this board. And we're, you know, we're thankful and my team's thankful. I'm thankful for the opportunity we have and um, I don't think I, there hasn't been a minute in Midland that I haven't enjoyed. So. And I even enjoy coming to the FFO meetings as well. So oh. I look forward to those every month. Believe it or not, I do. So keeping the, keeping the board up to speed on, on what we're up to. So that's, that's as important as, as anything we do. So. The coinage of the new word stemification is really important. Yeah, I, I came up with that last night. So I'll just let you know. I think the S is a dollar sign. Yeah. Good yeah. ways. Yeah. I would just Very say true. that being in the building, for example, Plymouth, when uh, you talked about painting those walls. That is just a remarkable difference to have the old red brick walls are now bright and white and, it's and when you talk to the staff and even the students, you just feel the, they're proud and they're excited to be in their, their new school. So even as we've made those changes in our older schools, they're excited just like people are at the STEM school. So yeah, and, and Mr. Cheryl challenges us a lot to, mm -hmm. to bring those things to the table. So we don't want to overlook something, mm -hmm. you know, s something small dollar wise compared to the 50 million we're talking about mm -hmm. that can have such an impact. So, you know, we, we try to bring those things forward, uh, you know, for Mr. Cheryl and the board to decide on. So Daryl, you're an expert. You do this as of your career. Um, our original bond application haven't achieved everything in there yet. 
we have some significant savings, do you think we are on track to pick up some of those other things that we've had to kind of wait and see on? Because we have 5.2 in savings, which is huge. That's a, a humongous number. But I do know that we haven't achieved everything that's on the list, and I know there's other items on there that are some, you have a lot of things to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we're definitely trending in the right direction, obviously, I mean, being at this point. Um, I will say that, you know, in other places I've worked, the bond application is not always as followed as rigidly as, as it's been followed here. So, I mean, every time we've gone out to bid on a project, we've looked at that list and said, okay, are we going to accomplish everything on this list? Um, and, and we've done that. Um, in scale, I think so we've, I mean, I'm thinking we've touched every area. You know, I've been through two of these myself. No way am I an expert, so I'm not trying to pass it on. But maybe I am beca becoming as schooled as a superintendent is. We've touched, I don't think we've left any area completely, but have we, I think to your point, Brad, is um, have we um, cut a little bit of flooring out of Seaver and Chestnut Hill, those kind of things. We'll go back and visit those, certainly that, at the end when you have those. But things change over the five, I mean, this thing's so long, this one, mm -hmm. as well. We'll have to go back and look at what the priority was in that bond app and where do we stand then to it as well, you know, because I, I do see the importance of some of those things, but can we pick some of that up with the sinking fund and then hit um, a roof area that's now old or some of the, you know, the one I worry about most is, um, I, always, I, I, I use this against you guys all the time to say, I don't want to get all done, done with doing all this fancy work and then have a, a roof leak. You wouldn't do that at home, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so we got to make sure with the infrastructure. Now, it's not fa fancy and pretty, but I worry more about the stuff that people don't see that we would miss that would haunt us somewhere down the road. And I would, so I, I guess I'm just saying when we get there, I think we need to reprioritize what it is in the app that we missed and stay within the language of it. That's just my personal opinion. I've been mm -hmm. part of some some districts that have been in ten-year programs, and by the time you get to eight, year eight, year nine, year ten, I mean your priorities have changed. A roof that was no longer a problem is now a problem. Um, so I think it, as important as to follow the bond application, it also makes a lot of sense to look at those buildings where they sit today and potentially make those those tough decisions. That was that was my point. Um, needing to evaluate the infrastructure to better allocate where that money has to go um, because well, we do have older buildings <laughs> that uh, need attention so. mm -hmm. no shortage of challenges when it comes mm -hmm. to no for sure do we have any more questions before we let this man go home <laughs> thank you daryl for thank you. your time thank you daryl Yes, I bring before you um, two suspensions and one student reinstatement. Student A, uh, a board subcommittee with three board members, Superintendent Charl, myself, the school administrator, and the parent met on January 26th in regards to student A, who's being recommended for expulsion for the remainder of the 17-18 school year. It's the committee's recommendation that student A serve this, this suspension, which actually the new law says anything after 59 days is an expulsion. So this will actually, if you vote on this, these are expulsions. Uh, the student does have the opportunity currently to attend the PASS program at the community center and can access curriculum online through the PASS program. Student A can apply for reinstatement over the summer for the start of the 18-19 school year. And this action requires a roll call vote from the board. We do not um, identify the student in public. These are public records, so by law you're not able to identify them. The committee certainly does, and you, you can know the student as well. Okay. This is new, so you haven't mm -hmm. done many this way. Yep. Um, some school boards have always had the, the all expulsions come to them. It has not been your practice, but lo the laws have recently changed, so you may see more of these. And as, as an unpleasant they are, um, as you know, they, some of these are needed. And, so, um, and we review them very well, this committee, with a good assortment of different personnel and different look at it, takes a look to make sure we're not bringing you a bad recommendation. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I will move to approve item 3.41, the suspension of student A. Are they actually, expulsion. the expulsion, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's yep. identified as suspension in the mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. Support. Support. Okay, I would like to open it up for discussion. 
obviously this greatly saddens me, but at the end of the day, we have to make sure we're providing a safe learning environment for the students that we have in public schools. In Tecla, we're not obligated to uh, provide some of the things that we're doing there, but we know that um, the, the, these students are younger as well, and so um, without providing those services, we're really creating a future societal issue, and so we're going to try to continue his education the best he can until that time that he can appeal to us, and he's met all the criteria that makes us up, that committee comfortable to reinstate him. You have a restatement in a little, little while in the same way um, where that student did meet those requirements. I feel more comfortable with this because we have the PASS program and we have an opportunity for this student to um, go to the community center and work with the ROC through this PASS program and um, I feel that's, that's uh, going to be a great program for us and an opportunity for the student to apply for reinstatement. Um, it's not a lifelong sentence, it's a let's, let's help get the student back on, on track and um, hopefully bring them back for reinstatement. Okay, um, we'll go into vote. All in favor of yes. approving? No, nope. roll, roll call, call vote. Oh, roll call vote. Okay, President Singer. Yes. Vice President Branstad. Yes. I vote yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Fridell. Yes. And Treasurer Frizzi is absent. So we have six. Okay, next yes student votes. B. On the same day, the same group met in regards to student B, who was also being recommended for expulsion for the remainder of the 17 18 school year. It is the committee's recommendation that met that student B serve the expulsion. The student also has the opportunity to attend the PASS program at the community center and also work online through the PATHS program. That's hard to say, PASS and PATHS. Um, student B can apply for reinstatement the same over the summer for the start of the 18-19 school year. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Support. Open for discussion. I'm sorry, moved by who? Oh, sorry. Moved by Mary. Mary. Support by Angela. Thank you. And any discussion? Uh, I'll, I'll note that it does say can apply for reinstatement, and so there's times they're not ready to apply at that time period, and they can apply later or never apply. And then um, uh, Patrick had some questions at one point on that as comfort level, and doesn't mean we're reinstating them. That committee has the ability to uh, reinstate or not reinstate, and I've had it happen both ways before. So. Okay. Very good. And if that's all the discussion, we'll move to a roll call vote. Okay. President Singer. Yes. Vice President Branstad. Yes. I vote yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Friedel. Yes. Six yes votes. And Treasurer Frizzi is absent. A student C is a reinstatement. On the same day, the same three board members, along with Superintendent Sharrow, myself, as well as a teacher, school administrator, and a parent, which is required by law for reinstatement met in regards to student C who applied for reinstatement with us at Midland Public Schools. In addition, student C was there. The parents, the counselor, and caseworker also attended the meeting. This is a recommendation of the board subcommittee for student C actually to be reinstated. This action re also requires a vote. I'll accept a motion. I will move to um, support item 3.43, the reinstatement of student C. Support. Moved by Scott. Support by Lynn. Any discussion? This is a good story here. I think she's going to do very well. I think the committee was very comfortable with her. Um, a lot of obstacles in her life and maybe a very good story on this. And she is recently being adopted by two foster parents and um, a lot of kudos go to those two parents for what they've done. I think this is, this is a happy story. Yeah, mm -hmm. very bright spot. Absolutely. Is this immediate? How does this work? Yes, we actually, um, because of the semester change, well, just a little bit out of order, I took action to put her in. Um, pretty sure you guys were going to vote in that favor because I didn't want her to miss that important start time and fall behind right off the bat. Okay. Okay. 
that was going to be my question. If it was a meeting, I asked the committee if they were comfortable enough. Could I do that? I didn't want her to so sit outside. So yeah, we were comfortable. Yeah, yeah we discussed you were that. Ten in days meeting. behind or something. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. was no for the benefit very supportive of, the of that. Okay, roll call vote. All right, President Singer. Yes. Vice President Branstad. Yes. I vote yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Friedel. Yes. Six yes votes. Treasurer Frizzy is absent. Moving into item 3.5 for action uh, transformers. Mr. Cooper? Yes, I have an item for you. It's no new news to you. It's the transformer at Delhi that gave us all that problem last summer. Uh, it was identified as needed to be replaced. Uh, it was designed and went out to bid. And as you can see, we have a low bidder uh, county line uh, power of Hope, Michigan for a price total of $88,825. And we're recommending that. Uh, we take that little bit. Very good. I accept a motion. I move we accept um, item 3.5, transformer at HH Dow High School. Support. Moved by Angelus, support by Scott. Any discussion? Well, it was, it was good news to get the, the bids in, and I, I was uh, pleased with the, the low bid of. 88825 and So it was below what we originally estimated, so we were pretty happy to. Yeah. It'd be more fun to spend that money on something else, but I guess power is important. Uh -huh. yeah. Just ask the girls' swim team who got to stand outside. <laughs> <laughs> they lost power. More than August. once, right? More than once. <laughs> more than once. <laughs> okay, we will uh, vote on this then. All in favor of uh, approving item 3.5? Say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. It's unanimous. Moving into item 3.6, Mr. Cooper, we have a roofing project. Yeah, this kind of fits right in with uh, Mr. Dombrow's presentation. Uh, like we've said before, there are things that change uh, while we did or are doing work at Seabird and Chestnut Hill. Um, there were roof sections that were not part of the original bond application. We put it in as an alternate to bid at the time to see if we could squeeze it in there. And as you know, those came back a, a little higher price, so we couldn't. That's the reason we've kept a little sinking of fun around all this time. It's not a, a, a fortune, but there's there's more than enough in there to cover it. So we took the alternative bid with the uh, two low bidders that they both were awarded work at different places, but they were also the low bidders on the uh, alternate. Um, the difference is when you use sinking funds, you don't have to hold to the prevailing wage, which you do have to under the bond funds. So we did uh, ask them both to resubmit, and on the bid tab, you saw what came back with the prevailing uh, wage clause removed and what it would cost. So at this time, we're recommending the low bidder, Australian Construction, Chestnut, Michigan, total for both. That's it's the dome at Chestnut Hill and the existing multimedia is the gym at Seabert. It, uh, and it goes over some of those uh, classrooms right off oh, there, too. So those are the two areas. Uh, the total is $127,200. Accept a motion. I move um, for approval of item 3.6, roofing project at Seabirt and Chestnut Hill. Support. Motion by Angela, support by Lynn. Open for discussion. It's great when we can uh, not have to uh, stick with the prevailing wage, and I think it, it opens up uh, the opportunity for some others to be involved in the bidding process. Absolutely. If that was retroactive for the 122 million, he could really do a lot more. It's one of the strengths of a sinking fund over yep. a bond, no doubt. And it, it's something we uh, should look forward going forward. But I think when that sinking fund went down prior to I was here, some of you that were here, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> maybe it was a good thing in some ways because you had a lot more work than a sinking fund would survive. Right. But um, always a bad because it's a pay-as-you-go, non-prevailing wage. It's, it's better, a better uh, financial situation for a taxpayer. But as you let things go and fall behind, you often make decisions that aren't, aren't as, as strong. And that's kind of where we ended up being. Good, good point. I mean, no, right. no doubt about it. Well, and I, I mean, I can remember probably was a long time in the past. I think it was Plymouth or something. We had to do, we just didn't have the money. And we had to do just a little section that you know was causing some issues and we didn't have the funds to do probably what really needed to be done at the time. Yep. Okay, if there's no more discussion, we'll 
Move into vote. All in favor for item 3.6, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it's unanimous. All right, we're moving into item four, request to address the board. Do we have anyone who would like to address the board this evening? See Here's me. Nepal emptied the room out here. I guess. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move into item five, curriculum instruction and assessment. Um, let's see, do we have meeting minutes? Yeah. Okay, Mary. Um, we met on Tuesday, January 16th. Uh, Lou Ann Bethinger uh, reviewed the process and resulting uh, MPS plan to address the uh, requirements of third grade uh, reading law that was implemented by the state of Michigan in 2016. The comprehensive plan includes uh, defined literacy assessments for all students, core reading instruction expectations for staff, and a prescription plan of action for students identified as needing support. Additional supports for buildings and students are being provided by literacy intervention specialists. And those specialists shared the committee with the committee their daily routines, examples of support provided, and feedback from parents. Included in this meeting also was the biannual sex education report and Scott Co Cochran reviewed requirements surrounding the sex education. The district sex education committee will be meeting this spring to reaffirm the district's chosen curricular pathway and to review the potential adoption of new materials. Uh, Mr. Co Cochran was also present also presented the state required biannual report to the committee and that um, I think is on the agenda for tonight. Great. And we're meeting again tomorrow. Very good. It sounds like an exciting meeting. Yes. Yeah. Lots of good information, I'm sure. Those specialists uh, really um, are enthusiastic uh, women and uh, excellent role models. And, uh, it's it's uh, really money well spent. Are we talking about the reading? Or the, the reading. Sex education. The reading. <laughs> I don't know about sex education <laughs> specialists. But. Okay. Okay. Cute Pam. <laughs> All right. Um, is there? We'll move into item five point two. Then it sounds like a lot of the things you covered in your minutes are covered in item five point two. We have the Advisory Board of Instruction in Sex Education and Birth Control. Uh, the following people have been appointed to the Advisory Board on Instruction in Sex Education and Birth Control for the 2017-18 school year by Midland Public School Board of Education. Mr. Patrick Brzee is a board liaison to this committee. Scott Cochran and Jeff Andrich will serve as co-chairs of this committee. Jeff Andrich is um, a representative from Midland Evangelical Free Church. Uh, we've got Amy Jaster, a health professional parent, and uh, several others that are on the committee. Is there any discussion around? No. Thanks to all of them for serving. Looks mm -hmm. like a good, good committee. Good group. Yep. And I saw a lot of uh, charts and data uh, that's going to go to those committees so they can make some informed decisions. OK, we move into item six, finance facilities and operations. Looks like we have some committee mm -hmm. minutes. Yep. We met on February 12th, and uh, Mr. Dombrow provided a Series 1 bond update, and uh, which we saw tonight at the meeting. And the committee was updated on the progress of the media centers at Plymouth and Woodcrest. And then under fi finance, facilities, and operations, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Sherrill reviewed and discussed the following items with the committee, the December financials, the Yo and Yo audit renewal, award of bid for the purchase and installation of the Dow High School transformer, awarding of roofing projects involving the dome at Chestnut Hill and the gym and quad at Seabird, and these projects will be done using sinking funds. There was an update on Carpenter Street Elementary School renovations, and the status of the district's handling of the 3% MIPSER's refund for employees who worked for the district between July 1st of 2010 and September 3rd of 2012. And our next meeting will be Monday, March 5th. Great. 
I know when we looked at the numbers, um, I noticed that we were doing very well in, uh, with the interest from the bond. And a big thank you for Lori um, for what she does there to make sure that uh, we get the most out of um, the, the funds that our community has invested. We have accounted for the interest, so Brad, on the 5.2, we also will have significant interest at the end. We kind of keep that kind of sitting on it to the end as well for the same reason. So typically that'll add to your pot that when you go back and review projects. And will that go in the capital fund? It'll be, it's part of the bond. The bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now what do we have? We have uh, for our information, gifts. Yeah, I have for you tonight uh, 6.2 gifts. I think there's 12 total, uh, $6,186.36. And I'm not diminishing any, but we do have our uh, typical groups, uh, Jefferson uh, Parent Advisory Committee, H.H. Dow High School, all sports boosters. But I just draw to your attention, you'll see uh, uh, one from uh, local chemists. Uh, you see some that are uh, teachers uh, have applied for through Highway Safety Association or a teacher that uh, attended uh, Indiana University and got some money given back, uh, targets on their uh, trips from the uh, Michigan Youth Arts. So just a little difference mattering of where they've been asking uh, different people to go. And, and three or four of those for sure came from teachers finding something someplace and applying and, and, and receiving it. I do also, under 6.3, have a gift which requires your action just because of the size of the gift. Uh, it was a $5,000 gift for Middle High School Science Club from an anonymous donor. So that would require your action tonight because of its amount. Very good. I move. We support item 6.3. Support. Moved by Angela, support by Mary. Open for any comments. How cool. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. And do it anonymously. I, I right. wish I knew exactly. who it was, I, but I say thank you. <laughs> we will. Uh, I guess uh, when I look at the other donations, I see a thousand dollars for from uh, Ford for the uh, safety uh, driver driving safety at Dow High, and that was uh, Madeline Reed and Paige Messick who who wrote the grant for that. I, so I think it's really neat when they uh, have students write grants. Um, wow. to get money back for the schools and for programs that the students are passionate about. So it's pretty neat. All right, moving into item seven, human resources. Yeah. Oh, we need to go. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> and, okay, so uh, all in favor of uh, approving item 6.3, say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Moving into item seven, human resources, uh, Mr. McFarland. Yes, we had a human resource study committee meeting on February 1st, 2018 at 11.45 a.m. Uh, there we discussed uh, grievances. Ms. Marchese updated the committee on the status of a Masespa grievance. Uh, as far as legal updates go, we were informed, uh, we the committee were informed of a legal lawsuit pending against the district. Uh, we also discussed ne negotiations with the Midland Federation of Paraprofessionals, uh, the district, and the MFP will meet again on February 7th, 2018. Uh, we talked about substitute teachers. Uh, Ms. Marchese informed the committee of the change in the substitute teacher contracted service company effective February 5, 2018. Our district and participating Midland County districts moved from PESG to EDUSTAFF. Uh, as far as early childhood staffing, we discussed that. Mr. Sherrill gave the committee an update on staffing of the early childhood programs at Carpenter Street School for the 2018 and 19 school year. Our next meeting is Thursday, April 19th, 2018 at 11.45 a.m. Thank you. And we move to item 7.2. Um, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathies to these families. Mrs. Margaret Boyce, who passed away on January 19th, 2018. Mrs. Boyce was an attendant secretary for H.H. Dow for 10 years, retiring in 1981. Mrs. Catherine Guyot, who passed away on January 19, 2018. Mrs. Guyot was an elementary and middle school teacher with Midland Public Schools for 24 years, retiring in 1988. The following staff members announced their retirement effective as of these dates. 
Terry Buffa, paraprofessional, Chestnut Hill Elementary, June 14, 2018. Deborah Chernick, teacher, Woodcrest Elementary, June 15, 2018. Patsy Hickman, paraprofessional, Midland High, June 14, 2018. Becky Hoover, paraprofessional, Seabird Elementary, June 14, 2018. Amy Hutchinson, Assistant Principal, Midland High, June 30th, 2018. Mary Marshall, Administrative Assistant, Jefferson Middle School, July 31st, 2018. Edward Jason Mary, Teacher, Woodcrest Elementary, June 15th, 2018. Tracy Mary, Teacher, Chestnut Hill Elementary, June 15th, 2018. Jorge Pena, Teacher, Northeast Middle School, June 15th, 2018. And lastly, Beth Quimby, Teacher, Chestnut Hill, June 15th, 2018. There's a lot of great people wow. in that yeah. for sure. A lot of years of service. And you'll be seeing some more in next, the next couple months as well, that time of year. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad we get it several months with them before they, they're gone. Well, plenty of time to wish them well. Item eight, correspondence to and from the board. We have uh, for, uh, letters from the Board of Education that will go to um, many of the donors that we talked about tonight. And for information, we have a FOIA request from Progress Michigan for MPS Communications with two MCESA employees and a FOIA request from uh, Jacqueline Sessa for contract award information for Dow High Wrestling Mats. Item nine, we have scheduled activities for information. Our next meetings as well as our bu budget workshop will be coming up and uh, moves us right into item 10, study discussion session. So I'd like to open it up. Mary, would we start with you? Um, I was just looking over the, the uh, communique that came out today, and um, if people haven't had a chance to look at that yet, it's um, the district is offering preschool uh, preschool offerings, wonderful opportunity for families who have three or four year olds uh, this coming school year. Um, please check out these offerings. Um, congratulations to uh, Midland High School on their Educational Excellence Award for that innovative ninth grade summer project, the math project, um, getting those kids fired up about math and realizing that they could do math. It was uh, practical applications and, and really outstanding. So uh, it's nice to see uh, Midland Public Schools in the, in the highlights there again. That's what I have. Thanks, Mary. And the Nepal Project, oh my gosh. Extraordinary, mm -hmm. extraordinary. All right, well, I just had a couple of things. Obviously, the Nepal Project was Fascinating tonight, and I love the update on our bond, but I think I already commented on that earlier, how proud I am of everything that we've been able to do. Um, tonight obviously saddened me that we had a couple expulsions, but also proud of our um, district that we do have some other options for students when they end up in those situations um, to hopefully turn themselves around. Um, I've been getting a lot of information recently about the booster bash that's coming up on uh, St. Patrick's Day. So um, as my husband and I have always done, we're uh, sponsors again this year and I challenge everyone to um, you know, take the opportunity to purchase tickets and go. It's always a wonderful event and um, I think we've seen through uh, the donations from the booster clubs at both high schools how much um, support that they give to our high school athletic programs. Um, one final thing, I just spent my weekend doing college visits and um, I, um, yesterday we were taking a tour at a college and we had this super energetic young lady and she is uh, dual majoring in chemistry and biology and I thought, wow, great person for, you know, to give us, coincidentally to give us a tour and we got to the end of the tour and so she was just talking to um, my daughter and my husband and myself. And so I said, oh, are you from the state of Michigan or are you from out of state? And she said, I'm from Midland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So it was very exciting because she just, you know, when I think about everything we do here in STEM education and she was a Midland High grad. And when I look at, you know, tonight we voted on a $5,000, you know, anonymous donor contribution um, to science in the high schools. And um, it was just very exciting for me to, um, 
to just coincidentally run into someone. I, I didn't know her, and um, what a great role model she is, and so oh, enthusiastic about um, science and passing that on to all these students yesterday. That is all I have. Excellent. Thank you. Scott? Uh, I thought the presentations tonight were, were both very powerful, and, and uh, though they were kind of markedly different, um, they really illustrate the point of what we have and what can be done with resources. And when communities come together, um, the great things that can be achieved. Um, that was great. The, the one thing I wanted to kind of highlight with, with Pam Andrews, um, just to kind of illustrate the impact that she has on her students. My son is here with us tonight, Sebastian, who's a fourth grader now. He had Miss Andrews last year. And when Mr. Schroll announced to the school that Pam was receiving an award, he came home and today, when I told him I was coming to the meeting, he said, guess who's getting an award? Can I come and watch? Aww, thanks uh, for Sebastian. Yeah. Thanks, Sebastian. So he doesn't get any signatures. He's not in a government <laughs> class. Uh, but he sat through an entire meeting, which many students don't do. So I wanted to <laughs> give him a little credit for that. So thanks, Sebastian. And that's all I had. Go ahead. What a good sport, too. <laughs> um, I uh, had the pleasure to attend Ren Fair, and I'd like to congratulate Dow High on a, a wonderful performance. The students and the staff, uh, they're always uh, a wonderful surprise at the talent that they, that they all share. Um, so a, a wonderful evening. And once again, congratulations to Shining Stars, to Sean and Pam. It's always an honor to uh, recognize people for the things that they do above and beyond and, and behind the scenes that the rest of us don't always see. And the Nepal project, I just, it just warms my heart to see that um, so many people are involved in this. From the high school, mm -hmm. these young men over here that are going to, as we said, they're going to take, they're gonna, we're gonna see them doing great things in the future all the way down to these little ones that are in the elementary school. And, and it just, it, it just keeps showing me how important education is, whether you're here in, in, our, in our wonderful new central elementary or these students that are excited to be in their, their little block building over in Nepal. So um, thanks to everyone once again for changing lives. And, for da and to Daryl and all your crew that, and your presentation makes it, makes it easy for all of us to see and understand what we're doing with all that wonderful bond money. And then um, several of these teachers that are announced their retirements, my kids have had. And so, yeah, a lot of years and a lot of dedication and um, also kind of makes me feel feel old because <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they always seem like young teachers and now they're retiring so I wish them very uh, very well in their retirement they all all deserve it and I haven't met too many teachers that um, or too many people that retire and regret it so I I know that they've got fun years ahead okay thanks Lynn mm -hmm. I just want to thank Kimberly and Karen for the great job along with all the students uh, just fascinating with their Nepal project and however many students that has touched. I think it's a try to even to track that down would be a mm -hmm. humongous number. Um, so we see the ginormous impact on that side. Ours isn't quite as measurable on this side, but it may be more of a long-term thing that touches these young young men and, and, and from the high schools as well as at all the other schools that worked on the project. Um, for them to think globally, it's very difficult. Um, to do. I um, want to thank Daryl and his group for the presentation. I think that uh, we still have a long ways to go. Some awesome things that have been done so far, but we still have a lot of work to do. Um, very old buildings, very tall challenges, and uh, we'll, be, we'll continue to do the best that we can. And um, We'll still be tough on you, but <laughs> um, you can expect that. So, but so far, we're doing great. So thank you again for the presentation and for your effort so far. And hopefully we'll be able to pick up some of those things that we haven't been able to get to yet and continue on with the savings and the interest. Thanks, Brad. Um, Gerstacker nomination window closes March 6th. And the Midland Area Community Foundation Scholarship window closes March 1st. So just a shout out for those. I guess um, along with all the comments about Nepal um, tonight, it would, I 
I've loved that project since the beginning, and I've got to uh, thank Mr. Cheryl for saying yes to that. Um, I think you better thank Mr. Bruton because what I get, I've get, if you know internally how hard I ride Mr. Bruton, this was one that Mr. Bruton fought, brought forward that I have to tell you probably was a no in the beginning. So he, he convinced me up better of it. So he, he gets a shining star tonight. There you go. <laughs> All right. We'll get you a candy bar next, next week. Um, I guess two things are on my mind. Uh, one is the Senate passed uh, Senate Bill SN 584 and 586 allowing concealed carry in schools and the banned local policies um, on firearms. So I want to see what, how that moves forward and um, how we, we can uh, react to that. And then uh, just the Senate, the House, and the Governor's budget versions are um, now we're waiting to, for the state budget, and uh, I'll look forward to how that's going to impact us and uh, decisions we'll make um, based, on, based on the budget that, that we see coming down the pike. Um, I think there's uh, a lot of things that are going to impact that state budget, so um, I guess we'll wait and see. And that is all I have. I'll move fairly quickly since we've been here for a while. Um, wellness update, I wrote to you that um, something we want to do for our employees, which probably also benefits us in the long run, or taxpayers in the long run, um, is to have healthy employees. And so we've created a program, Janet's formed a committee um, to begin our work on wellness, wellness initiatives inside the school district. Um, we partner with Greater Midland um, Community Center. Uh, they were here presently doing a health survey and offering some services at the, their facility. United Ways worked with us on a employee assistance program, which we have one, but it hasn't been really taken uh, advantage of, and so we're trying to work with that. Certainly what we've seen recently in some schools, employee assistance would be a help at going forward as well. And then, of course, MESA, our present health insurance provider, provides numerous services that sometimes employees aren't aware of, and they've been also in our buildings making that awareness. So we're kind of excited, early stages of that going forward. Um, as you know, I got to be treated very well by Attorney um, General Bill Schutte and got to go to the um, State of State address. And so I thank him for that piece of that. And he was a very gracious host. I even have a wonderful picture with him and I together. And, um, uh, but the address that night was interesting and it was interesting watching um, the reaction to it. Um, I do think the 24120 could be somewhat in jeopardy in the sense that um, I think there is some push within even the Republican Party to maybe tie to some of that money to categoricals as well. Mm -hmm. And there's a mix in there of some good and bad. You will lose some money on shared time as well. So I, I, I am, you know, when Bob gets his um, budget, early budget um, presentation in, in March, am I saying that right, Bob? April. April. Um, I think we'll have more. Don't get too excited one way or another. We'll have a feel kind of where some of that's going. But it's not all rosy, you, because if you're in, I guess you've been doing this as many years as me, you read in between the lines, and when you read uh, the headlines, it's not as rosy as everyone's making this up. It, it's so good. I think the governor threw a, <laughs> I think the governor threw something out, but as you know, this has got a lot of maneuvering before it's done. Mm -hmm. And my old veteran eyes at this point say, we're going to get a chunk of money, but it's going to be tied to some things, and so don't think it's just free to use and as we go forward, cautiously as we go forward. And of course, we are getting 120 at best, not 240. We are, that's that 2x formula going forward. Interesting, they emphasize CT and GSRP in there, and we kind of expected that. They actually put a little money out mm -hmm. to CT, which is kind of nice for that to occur. That would be a windfall for us since we are, you know, we offer the predominantly um, the most programs here. Um, GSRP, where we're going with early childhood, love that one as we go forward as well. Um, early Childhood Education Center at Carpenter, we've presently had a carpenter, one of our carpenters in there, um, addressing that side of the building. Um, he's been in patching walls and uh, removing bathroom stalls and painting and uh, uh, we've removed some carpet, but after we tried to get some of the carpet off, we realized that some pieces weren't coming off. We had to best this abatement that so <laughs> that's been out to bid and then new carpeting new paint um, there's a new buzz in door for that facility at some point as well um, the boilers that we spoke about tonight that were coming from uh, Parkdale will be installed and I think that may be large enough that you'll have to take bid on that piece 
uh, of it, uh, but the rest we're kind of doing internally in that facility. Our goal is July to have, or maybe June to have that facility ready because licensing can be quite a little bugaboo to go through. We're kind of be preemptive and bring them in through now to point out some things that they might like for us. Playground equipment, we looked at that with an inspector as well. Uh, with that young of age, there's some equipment that works, some that does not. We saved the lower L equipment, um, but some of the lower L is still too big for that age students, and so we have a little bit of work to get, get that up and rolling as well. Enrollment's ongoing for it. Um, some jobs have been posted. We'll have to have a director. We probably need an office person. Um, and then we'll have to have those two people look at the number of teachers' pairs that we presently have and what needs to be added to there as well. There's a lot of work on early childhood, but it's good work as we go forward. Um, we recently found out that Central Park Elementary is going to be a centerpiece of the Midland Area Chamber of Commerce's annual business and lifestyle guide. So uh, we were recently on the phone and they were pulling information, so Central Park is going to be the centerpiece of that document when it comes out by our own community. So that's kind of exciting as well. Very exciting news last week as well, and we were anxiously waiting because we thought Midland High had a great opportunity to earn their first um, Michigan High School Educational Excellence Award, and they did so from the Michigan Associated School Board, sponsored by Setsag Insurance Company, and um, they'll get $2,500, a trophy, and a road sign. This is our fourth in five years, I think, in the public that we've been here, so we've been doing quite well with that as well. Some good programs going out there, and that was for the Chemic Challenge that you heard a presentation on a few months back. I recently presented to the Women's Study Club of Midland. It's a group that I spoke to on the bond. They asked me to come back. They hadn't seen me in a while, so I was able to give an update on bond work like you saw tonight, as well as just a regular state of state of the school district. Our finest is our enrollment, our academic achievement, which I share that document with you because you need to be good spokesmen of the district and have the right information, and there's some good information in there that at least gives you all the pertinent topics that people may be asking you about as you go forward. I uh, gave you some construction progress update that you maybe didn't fully hear tonight. So we have been, uh, the uh, media centers have now been turned over to us, but we are waiting on equipment on some of that. So um, we are ahead of schedule on that piece as well going forward. Fences went up, that's ahead of schedule actually at Seabert and Chestnut Hill. So we had some neighbors asking us, what's going on at those schools? <laughs> <laughs> so fair enough, they saw some fence going in. Mandarin Chinese pilot, you approved two pilot programs, if you recall. One of them requires us to hire a Mandarin teacher. Those interviews are coming this Friday and Monday. I heard 10 applicants, and they're going to interview four or five maybe, um, I think just a few hours ago. And it's kind of exciting to have that many. Yeah. So um, That's great. I think we saw some good things there. So teacher recruitment season's coming. I've been out on a statewide teacher shortage work group that we've been working on things. This thing's real. It's coming. We need to get on the road. We need to go recruit the best. And so that's where we're being proactive there as well, spending a little bit of uh, manpower and probably a little bit of your dollars, but I think it's going to be well spent in the long run uh, in being aggressive on that and hire as early as we can to get the best candidates out there. Enrollment has um, now been certified. Um, Bob will have that best information for you again in April, but we're about 50 students um, above where we budget it, budget it. And then, at, interesting at the semester, we typically have lost about 50 s students at semester, mostly at the high school, those who begin to find their way to alternative programs. Um, we are down to about half of that, maybe 20, um, a decrease, and a big piece of that would be the past program, picking up some of those students. So some good and bad there. The, the good is we've got them, we're, we're saving some kids. High school principals are probably going to see some test scores that some kids now testing that didn't test for us before that probably won't hit the full proficiency mark on some of those. Flu season, I know some people were concerned about that. I've watched, Cindy and I have watched that on a, on a weekly basis where our, our um, daily attendance rate has not changed one bit in any of our buildings. So we somehow have dodged that so far. I just heard on the radio this morning we're at the peak and they expect it to go downhill from here. So hopefully another month or six weeks we can continue to dodge the flu and MPS. And the last thing I will talk about is thoughts and prayers with those families affected in Florida. Um, lots of work to do on school safety. We have spent millions of dollars in this country on secure entrances, video surveillance, and equipment. That is not the answer to how we're going to solve this. It's a preventive. It's no different than buying locks at your homes and security systems at your home. 
this issue is bigger than that. And I'm not going to get into all the issues because it's not for me as a superintendent of MPS to get into those. Um, but we have got a lot of work as a nation to do. We're, we're going to work on it. Um, statewide, I actually was on a phone conference today with statewide with some superintendents and our superintendent association about putting our minds together about some practice changes um, ongoing. You know, we've had a big initiative. You've heard a presentation earlier as well on mental health and the initiatives that we're taking. It's early stages. We're still not perfect on it. We've got a lot of work to do on that piece of it. We have a lot of work to do on um, how make sure we're using that security right. Um, my biggest fear is we put all the security in and somehow a door stays ajar and the student gets inside or someone gets inside that's not supposed to be. Hence, this emergency, somehow he got to a fire alarm. So he's an outside student at this point. He got to a fire alarm, set the fire alarm off, and set this event into trigger. But out of this, I think maybe um, if we can work together and have civil discussion, I think we'll get progress that we haven't had a whole lot of. And I hope, I hope everyone realizes we're better together, working civilly together towards an answer. And there's no easier answer. There wasn't. This didn't happen in the last decade. I've been a superintendent. I've been a school administrator over 20 years now, and I can remember being a high school principal in Columbine, which is almost 25 years ago now. This problem has been happening for 30 years, 40 years. The, the issues that caused this problem is 50 years in the making. Uh, we didn't get here overnight. It's not one single issue. It's multiple issues that has gotten us to this point. I'll close with that. Thank you. I'll accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Or, supported by Mary, moved by Scott. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand adjourned.